All right, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now, see if you can picture this with me. Imagine Satan's strategy to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, one of the things he will do as a strategy, he will do whatever it takes to separate you from the lover of your soul, the one you have committed everything to. Well, who would that be? Jesus Christ. Now, imagine a case scenario. All right. You going with me now? Come on, let your imagination go with me. Now, here we are. We have a woman. She's the lover. The man, he's a husband, and his wife. Now, the wife is kind of suspecting. She's getting a bunch of little hints all along the way. But she's waiting for the proof. Mm -hmm. Now, the lover on the side, she wants him all to herself. So she is so down and dirty, she will do her do to get him undone with his wife. So she can have him all to her. So what she does is she plans a rendezvous with her lover man and then sends a note, an anonymous note to the wife to let her know if you want to find your husband, I know who he's cheating with. Go to this address, right? So the man is so caught up in the, in, in the enticement of this woman. And I mean, they are just, just everything you can imagine. Even things he can't do with his wife. Oh, he can do with her. She game. Okay. So here we are. And they're in the hotel room. And they are all, they're tearing them sheets up. And the lover leaves the door unlocked on purpose. The woman goes to the address and to the door and listens. And her heart is breaking. She's crying. And she busts the door open. And he's shocked. <gasps> oh, honey, let me explain. She turns around. She doesn't say a word. She gets in her car. She takes off crying. And it's straight to divorce court, she goes. In the meantime, lover girl that's in the bed with him is smirking up under them sheets. She's doing everything she can not to crack up because in her mind now, she thinks, you're mine, baby. I got you all to myself now. Now, this is what that came, this is what brought that to mind. Imagine Satan luring you, enticing you, drawing you through the lust of your own flesh, through your own desires. And he sets out all these familiar spirits on assignment to bring you down. Oh, yeah. Because he wants you to him. He wants, he wants company when he's stuck in hell. So everybody... He hates. He doesn't love. He hates. And he wants to pull everybody with him that he can get his hands on. So now he's got his sights on you. And what is he planning? He's hoping that right at the time when you are at your worst, what happens? Here comes your, the, the lover of your soul. Here comes your Savior, your God, your Lord to come get you. But you're in the bed with another lover. You're playing on Satan's turf. And Satan is cracking up. Because when Jesus splits the sky, whatever you're doing, baby, that's where you are. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is being sinful, let him be sinful still. So whatever you're doing is going to be, you know how they say it is what it is? Yeah, it going to be what it going to be. It is. Whatever you're doing, 
when Jesus comes, there will be no excuses. There will be no plea bargaining. It is set. And that is the sole purpose of Satan enticing you. He wants you to miss out. He wants you to commit adultery on God. He wants you to crucify Jesus afresh, afresh by walking all the way back into your sinful lifestyle. He wants you to backslide so far that you are that God turns you over to a reprobate mind. That is the perfect goal because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And his focus of destruction is you. Think on that. Next time you decide to go playing in somebody else's yard, on somebody else's turf, playing by someone else's rules, other than God's who you verbally publicly and spiritually committed yourself to think before you take that final leap